Now, one of the mounds that Wilson and Blackett have written about is a mound at a place called Unisabul, not far from here. Um, and this is it here. It's a naturally occurring hill, but on top of it, they claim that there's a, an additional piece of earth put on there. And they've actually had ground penetration radar testing done on this hill. They've also had deep metal detection done on this hill. So this is a huge, a huge earth mound. So this is Alan in 2005 with the um, ground penetration radar equipment. Now based on the tests that they did in 2005, they did, they did deep metal detection, which I'm going to speak about in a second, and they did uh, ground penetration radar testing, and also comparing this mound with other mounds that have got things inside them. This is what Wilson and Blackett claim is inside. Like I say, it's not far from here. Um, he reckons it's an excavated chamber with five drainage shafts coming off the north side of the hill, uh, and these keep, the whole, keep this area dry, take all the water off, and he reckons there's an excavated tunnel in, into the side. This is a cross-section of one of the drainage sumps, so they've got special stones in which prevent any sort of weeds growing around there so that the, 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 the sump can allow water to flow through it. This is a photograph of one of the sumps, which you used to be able to see on Google Earth. You can't see them anymore for some reason now. And now this is Alan Hassel who did the metal detection for them in 2005. And again, don't believe any, anything anyone tells you. Try and find it out yourself. Uh, and I've interviewed Alan Hassel who's an independent researcher. Uh, I, I should have recorded the telephone call but I didn't. I spoke to him for about two hours and these, this is from my notes of speaking to him. He said that he used a Pulse Star 2 metal detector. These metal detectors, they're like they're a meter square, the, the coil is huge. You stand in the middle of the coil, and you've got like a box of electronics. They're, they're two, three thousand pound each. So that's the metal detector that he used, which will go down 20, 30 feet. He marked out a 30 to 40 yard square on top of the hill. He scanned the land in one meter wide strips, horizontally and vertically. After 45 minutes, he hit a huge target. The device went off the scale. By scanning vertically and horizontally, he determined the target was approximately two foot by four foot non-ferrous metal. He then uh, used ground penetrating radar. Well, he didn't. Uh, Wilson and Blackett did, but he witnessed the ground penetrating radar picked up two of the drainage tunnels. He also confirmed that the farmers didn't come to witness the find. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm not sure what's in there, but I'm pretty sure that, that some of this archaeology is there, and I think there's probably something inside the hill, but I have no clue what's in there. Wilson and Blackett claim, and in order to understand why they think this, they claim that it's the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I don't know that. Um, the Ark of the Covenant, for those who don't know, is the box which Moses had built in round about 1400 BC in which to house the Ten Commandments which were written on stone, two tablets of stone given to Moses by God. I have no idea that, that, that this artifact is inside of that hill, but I think there is something inside of that hill. Now, <clears throat> if this was inside of that hill, I think it's worth digging the hill up. Um, because as you might know, I'm into UFOs and I suspect that Moses, um, or the person who was Moses, because some people say Moses was a title, I suspect that Moses, th that event on Mount Sinai did happen, and something happened there, and some law was given to Moses to give to the people, but I don't think that that word was the God of the universe. I think there's an intermediary going on here. I think it was a God, a God, not, the, not God, but a God. That's just my opinion. I don't want to offend anyone who, who is a Christian, right, or, or, or a Muslim or, or a Jew, right? But just my opinion, I think that there are advanced beings who've been on this planet before us and who possibly had a hand in making us, right? And I think that, 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 that event on Mount Sinai was extremely important. So whatever's inside here is evidence of that. Who wouldn't want to see that? But as I say, I'm, I'm not convinced the Ark of the Covenant is there, but I think it's worth excavating it just to see what is there. Now, when I spoke to Wilson and Blackett about this, they said that there was kind of a stalemate between the farmers who own this land, and they weren't allowing them back on the land. 
they just kind of saw them as pests really um, so I was interested to go down and speak to the farmers and find out why they weren't wanting to have some tests done on this area and now you've suspected that that was there since when the sort of mid 80s uh, I got a photograph from my colleague there in 82 I'm at a village called Unis Abul in South Wales and behind me is a hill on top of which is a, a man-made mound. According to Alan Wilson, um, the Ark of the Covenant is buried inside the man-made part of this hill behind me. And he has in the past tried to get this hill dug up. Um, he's approached the Welsh authorities, he's approached the farmers. The farmers have been talked out of um, having any excavation done. So I'm intrigued to speak to the, to the owners of the land, um, a farm just a few minutes down the road here. So I'm gonna knock on the door so I spoke to the two farmers, two brothers, I had about a 25-minute conversation with them and then I've recorded uh, my recollection of that conversation. It was quite a delicate negotiation. Um, I asked if I could go on the land to take some photographs and they, straight away they said no. Now they said that um, they weren't convinced that he'd actually found anything and they said that, that, that he hadn't actually shown them any, any concrete results, there was, that there was anything there. So therefore they weren't prepared to have their land dug up based on what they thought was nothing. Um, but they then did say that, that, having said that, they didn't go up there and see what he was doing, they didn't show much interest. Um, so I've persuaded them to um, at least get, have an independent person come on the land and do another test and if they do find something there and they can demonstrate it to them that they would possibly then consider uh, having the land excavated. So that's October 2011 I managed to get a verbal agreement off them for me to get an independent person and do some more tests and then possibly have some investigation done after that. Uh, the reason why I'm telling you this is because so many people ask me what's happening with that hill in Unisable Richard when are you going to dig it up? And I'm just, I'm just illustrating to you that I have tried my best to help Wilson and Blackett with this. Okay. Now, so what I did, I put that verbal agreement in writing and I, uh, uh, just to confirm what was agreed. That they were agreeing for me to get an independent person to come on their land. Right. So I then, I actually put an appeal out on the TV show for anyone who's got the type of equipment that can test that land and I got a reply from a company called Mac International Limited and they do testing for Second World War bombs. Um, now the guy was called John Morrison and we agreed, I agreed with him that we would go to Unisable on Saturday the 14th of April 2012 and I sent the farmers a letter explaining this and I sent them company literature from Mac International Limited explaining to the farmers that they would get a full report from this land scanning and then they could, and it would be, wouldn't cost them anything and there would be no disruption to their land. So, um, I informed the, for the farmers that we were going to be there on the 14th of April 2012. After I sent that letter, I got a phone call from them saying, hang on, we want to go through a solicitor with all this, we're not quite happy about this. So I went away, I spoke to Wilson and Blackett and we said, fine, that's not a problem. We will even pay your solicitor's fee to get an agreement drawn up that we can come on the land and do, the, do this scanning. So I then followed that up in writing, saying that we were prepared to pay their solicitor's fees, that we were quite happy for them to have some contract in place before we go on the land. Um, I then reminded them of that fact on the 10th of May and I rang them several times throughout 2012 saying well have you appointed a solicitor, can we speak to your solicitor, or have you got an agreement and, and they just, they either didn't come to the phone, this is Alan Edwards the farmer or he just didn't seem interested, he hadn't appointed a solicitor so I kept ringing, kept ringing, hadn't appointed a solicitor. So <clears throat> the final throw of the dice in April last year I went there and I've just recorded this conversation. I left the camera running in the car, went to the farmhouse, and I'm just showing you this to show you the intransigence of these farmers, because I don't understand it. That's Alan Edwards' house. Hello, uh, can I speak to Alan, please? 
sorry? My name's Richard, Richard Hall. I think you might know who I am. It's, um, I was here about 18 months ago, just asking about the twin ecog and All right. possibly getting it uh, metal detected and scanned. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've written them a few letters. But yeah. The last one was in April, the April last year, April 2012. Yeah. Uh, I think he's, the last time I spoke to him, he said you were, you were thinking of uh, going to a solicitor just to get an agreement. We haven't done anything about it. We haven't done anything about it. Haven't done anything no. about it. No, I don't know whether he's here actually because they lamb in at the minute. All oh, right, okay. But, uh, hang on a minute. No, we're still at working. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Okay. We're uh, back and ready to knock it. All right, eight o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And. I, mean, I don't know whether you're aware of the, of the claim because yeah. the, the claim is that there's a huge treasure there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and uh, I mean, do you know why he wouldn't just want to uh, allow a, a land mm -hmm. scan? Mm -hmm. has, has he said why or? Has said why? Yeah. No, I don't, no. I, at the moment, I just I don't think they're really interested. They're not interested. No. Okay. Is that, do you think that's because they don't believe the claim or? Or someone said mm. something to yeah, them, they or don't believe the thing, not they, they don't believe. I, I've seen any of the because I've I've produced several TV shows covering the, yeah, the history. Yeah, we've seen those. You've yeah. seen them, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So so that wouldn't be enough to no. allow us on the land and just have a scan. No, no. Right. No. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So so the, the, because he did say that he would he would if he was going to do something he would need to get a solicitor to draft yeah. up an agreement. We agreed to pay for that. Yeah. But you still wouldn't uh, wouldn't be interested. Well, he hasn't mentioned it lately. No. He hasn't so, mentioned it. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for your help. Okay. okay thank, thank you. you. Bye bye now. Bye. Uh, I didn't speak to Alan Edwards, but I spoke to his wife, and it's just the same as last time. They're just not interested at all. Um, yeah. Right. Home, Jeeves. Yeah, so I've given up on them, and um. If anyone else wants to, well, I don't know how you might find their contact details. <coughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Can anyone explain that? Alan thinks that they've been got at. Someone said something to them. Um, am I bonkers for wanting to dig that hill up? <laughs>